Hey there, Tappers! Welcome to batch number three. We got a lot in store for you. Got uh, plenty of apples all set up right here. Pears, peaches. Can't believe it's been three already. I know. It's already number three. Yeah. It, it's been quite some time, but like. It has. It, sometimes it feels like it's been a long time, others, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Alright, so we got some Macintosh apples, as you probably saw from our Cryptid Happy Hour. Uh, they're fantastic. Love Macintosh apples. They're going to add great flavor to this. They look a little bit different currently because we froze them, so they're going to be a little bit softer, easier to blend, and they're, they might look a little different, which you've already seen that anyways if you watched batch number two. Uh, over here, we've got the apples that Nick will be cutting, and he has Empire apples. Uh, I don't know much about these apples. Yeah, we haven't used these before. It's kind of a unique one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ooh. So if you want to mention this, the first time we've used these. So we're not sure how they're going to turn out, but they should should be similar. Okay. He probably is going to cut this, but as Nick just said, <laughs> we've never used these apples before, so it'll be kind of interesting. I'm excited to see how these will turn out with the cider. All right, we got some wild pears. They're wild pears, so they're not going to be nearly as big as the ones you'd get in the store. We got these from... Uh, one of our friends who lives in the area, so they're nice and local. Rather than show you guys how to cut apples for the 15th time, we figured we're just going to do it off screen, and then uh, we'll show you the uh, aftermath of everything, and then a little bit, couple of the other important steps along the way. Yeah. All right, so this is what it looks like after first little handful of apples have been cut. Oh, do you want me to blend it too for him? No, no, that's okay. You All can... right, here. Whee! You can see a lot of good oxidation on that pretty quickly. I mean, they yeah. were oxidizing while we were cutting them. You can see on the apples there. That is true. Uh, one of the perks and also downsides, unfortunately, of uh, freezing them is they they juice everywhere. Oh, yeah. They're Which, leaking pretty good. It's good because it, it releases a lot of the juices for us, but it also makes a mess when you cut them. Yep. <laughs> Let's see if that... All right, let's see it. All blend, right. blend up those pears. So we've got this bucket in a basically a bath of ice. Uh, what that's going to do is it's going to help pull the temperature down of these pears even more than they already are. Because as we're cutting them, some of them are still a little frozen. But the point is, bring that temperature way, way down. So that way when we add our pasteurized apples, it'll basically cool it down to a workable temperature rather quickly. Good. That's thick. I was gonna say, give it a little shake. Take, take the top right off of it, even though I know I said not to. Before. Take your top off? Yeah. Okay. Just make sure that you... I would almost take this middle... Here, I'll take it right out for you. Oh, yeah. So thick, you don't even really need the ladle. No. It's good, though. All right, so now we're going to be starting the pasteurization process for our apples here. Turning this on to high so we can get get it going nice and quick. The apples are currently at, get ready, it's going to be rather low because they were cold. 52. Warmer than I actually expected. But we got to wait for those to get up to temp for pasteurization to kill off some of those natural bacteria. And we'll just... Let that go for a little bit. Time to add our, you know, little bit of sugar. Metric F load. <laughs> yeah. 
I'll give you a stir while you're doing that so we right, don't perfect. get any big clumps. Now it's important to do this while the stuff is hot, otherwise uh, you won't get, it won't dissolve properly. Yeah. Or you won't be able to dissolve nearly as much. Like we uh, unfortunately found with our honey. <laughs> Uh, apparently that's a pretty prevalent issue with our peach blues. Yeah, when we added the honey, it didn't really quite, uh, we don't think we added enough into it, so it didn't really carbonate properly. Yeah, yeah, a lot of it settled at the bottom, unfortunately. Now we're going to pour it in there. Cool it off. This process is called crashing. If we're lucky and we did this properly, it should bring us right down to where we need to be, or at least very close. Yeah. Give her a stir, and then let's see what the temperature is on that. Oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we might have crashed it a little too hard. Oh yeah. What are we? What are we looking like? You got to remember that that's measuring the side, so. Might not be accurate. You got to get a measurement of the liquid itself. No, like itself. my finger. Oh, a little chilly? That's still saying 90. Mm -hmm. Oh, you saw that one spot where I hit? 60. Yeah. So let's give it a good stir and then we'll... The yeast is ready. So we'll set it. It'll give us enough time to set everything up. Mm -hmm. All right. Now it's time to add our yeast nutrients and our yeast. We went for a champagne yeast on this one. Go ahead. All right. Added our nutrients. Give that a good stir. All right. Uh, I was kindly reminded before we add in our yeast, we want to try and get this up to the five gallon mark because we did everything for five gallons and we want to make sure it's at. We have enough before we actually add our yeast first. Perfect. There we go. Good enough. Oh, I've almost forgotten my PEMDAS of cider making. <laughs> Nutrients, acid blend to get the pH to the right control, and then your yeast. <laughs> did you like that, the PEMDAS? I did like your PEMDAS reference, yes. Now that the pH has been balanced out. We're going to do a test with our hydrometer. Okay. Okay. So it's second line below five. So that's seven. So about seven is not, what it looks like. That's not bad. No. That's actually where it should be. Yeah. That's, that's usually what we aim for with these. All right. Now time for our yeast. And what kind of yeast are we using this time? Uh, we are using champagne yeast instead of our yeast blend. We're hoping it gives like some lighter flavors than the ale yeast usually does because that just pulls anything and everything so we're hoping to get more of like a light lighter flavored this time time to get her sealed get it oh man over here does not want to seal Oh, there it goes. Eruption. See what I was saying about it being a little more filled? Yeah. I mean, that would also explain why it was really hard to put on. Yeah. They had back pressure. That's good, though. That's what that's supposed to do. Yep. There. All right, so our next one is going to involve these nice peaches here, which are left over from our peach blues and peach tea batch. Uh, we're going to be turning this into a peach vanilla brew, which for now just means we're going to have to take these peaches in and add them to our cider. Uh, the vanilla is not going to be added until secondary. All right, so we had a little bit of a blender malfunction. Um, we had to actually chop our peaches pretty finely. Uh, they don't look too bad. There are some bigger chunks in there. Um, but as long as we get a sufficient amount of surface area, we should still get a good flavor. Um, and they'll definitely still help crash our cider like we were hoping. So not ideal, but it'll work out good. Definitely still a really good peach flavor coming off of these. And they are cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. All right, so let's uh, let's pour in our apple sugar mixture here. 
We added the sugar off camera. We figured you guys can figure out how to add sugar. Beautiful pour. There we go. Let's see. Let's see how we're looking. Yeah, you can see there's a lot of the chunks here floating to the top. All right, what's the temp at? 90, looks like about 99. It did not help crash as well. I'm wondering if that's because it just weren't blended. Um, I'm kind of surprised I figured it would work a little bit better than that, but we do have our nice ice bath that this is sitting in, so we'll let it sit in there for a few minutes while we clean up, and uh, it'll be good to go. All right, so we got to add our mixture of yeast nutrient, energizer, just the same stuff that's in the other one. Make sure that our yeast is nice and happy so it can make good tasting quality alcohol. And now, since I added the water off camera, we will uh, test our pH and uh, get back to you when we have our desired pH. All right, now we're going to see what our ABV is here. See if we can get you a good view of it. That's what we want right there. Let me uh, drop it in, see where it settles. This one seems much higher, and I do think it's the peaches, Tyler. Yes. So that's looking at six, seven, eight. I'd say eight, just about eight. Assuming we get complete fermentation, we'll get about 8% in our final brew here. So good median, a little higher than what we like to look for, but still not bad. All right, so this is going back to our blend. So we do half and half, half being the ale yeast, half being our champagne yeast. And uh, this will give us a good combination of crispness and flavor from our fruits. Uh, it's worked well for us in the past with peach, so I think that this will be a good pairing for our peach vanilla cider here. I'm going to learn from what I had Tyler do, and uh, I'm going to leave the airlock off when I put this on. It's a little bit easier. Oh wow, look at like what? Isn't that weird? Oh, Isn't that wow. weird how much easier that is? There. And now we're done. Thank you for watching batch number three. We're excited to see how our pear and uh peach ciders turn out. Mm -hmm. It should be good. Uh, a lot of interesting smells while we we're cooking, all of them positive, thankfully. Yep. And uh the yeast definitely are potent, so we should we should be getting some good results, I think. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if that thing starts bubbling right now. Yeah, I'm really excited for this one. Yeah. Seems like it'll be really good. Yeah. Tune in in two weeks, and we'll uh, show you where we are with that. And uh, we actually have, uh, what is it, batch number? Yeah, it's batch number two, right? Yeah, batch number two. It's going into the bottles. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm laughing so hard at these. Yeah. <laughs> it's my idea. So far, spooky. Good idea. spooky. Yeah, and in, in uh, the spirit of spooky season. Yeah. <laughs> As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. We don't have cheers, but we do have spooky flashlights. Yeah, we do. We're spooky. Spooky.